Hello and welcome to the Euronet Plus Politics Debate. During the lockdown, we are talking to politicians, citizens, and journalists about the big issues during the coronavirus pandemic. This week, as we're getting closer to summer, we're going to be talking about tourism and the pandemic's effect on the travel industry. My name is Dave Keating, and today I'm joined by lawmakers and business representatives to talk about this very timely subject. I'm joined by Hungarian MEP Istvan Oyhe. Uh, Good afternoon. From Good afternoon. He's joining us from Budapest. He's from the center left SD group. Uh, then I'm joined by Spanish MEP Jose Ramon Bauza Diaz. He is joining us from Mallorca and he's part of the Renew group. Hello. How are you? And then finally, we're joined by Tom Jenkins. He's CEO of the European Tourism Association and he's joining us from London. Good afternoon. So this week, the discussion about tourism has really kicked up a notch. And I think that's because tomorrow is May 1st. And this is usually a time when people would start planning their summer holidays. But right now, whether or not people are going to be able to travel over the summer is totally unclear. We've been getting really conflicting signals uh, from lawmakers. For instance, Commission President Ursula von der Leyen uh, first said people should not plan holidays this summer. And then she later walked that back. And the reason lawmakers are being very hesitant to tell people they just shouldn't travel travel this summer is because tourism is a big industry in Europe and the economic impact of people not taking vacations could be very severe. Uh, tourism is 10% of European economic output and represents something like 12% of employment here. Uh, so politicians are talking about how tourism could be allowed in a limited way, in a safe way that would strike a balance between protecting the tourism sector and also keeping people healthy. Now, the OECD anticipates that 45 to 70 percent decline in the tourism economy. Uh, this would amount up to a loss of up to 400 billion euros. It's a huge amount we're talking about. It would put 10 million European jobs at risk. And it's not just a short-term problem because if uh, European tourism businesses collapse this summer, then they won't still be there for when people feel ready to take vacations next year. So this could have a real impact on this huge sector in Europe for many years to come. And the particularly difficult element of this for Europe is that unlike other places, like say the United States, uh, Europe is made up of many small to medium sized countries that have borders between them. And right now those borders are closed in exceptional Schengen suspensions. The big question is whether or not those borders are gonna be open again in time for summer because a lot of people here when they travel, they travel abroad, especially if they live in Northern Europe, they need to go down to the South if they wanna have uh, some sun or some nice beaches. Uh, so those border closures are a big element. And of course, the other element is even if the borders are reopen, will people be able to get on planes? Uh, that's a whole other uh, debate because the airlines say they're really in danger of bankruptcy here. They've asked now for a total of 26 billion euros in bailouts from governments. Uh, and those governments are also looking at ways to protect them from fallout. The big debate we're seeing this week is whether airlines should be able to offer customers only vouchers, time-limited vouchers, instead of giving them refunds, which is normally required under EU law. Now we're expecting an EU strategy on this in the coming two weeks, but in the meantime, there's a lot to talk about here. So let's throw it out to the panel. Uh, Tom, I wanna start with you. What is the current state of the, the tourism industry in Europe and, and what are the really acute problems that the tourism sector is facing? Well, I mean, I think you've, you've given us a brilliant summary of the, uh, of the situation. Uh, the situation is, is, is effectively simple. Um, there is effectively uh, no demand for any product in any of the European countries, which constitute the primary markets for Europe. Um, people are simply not allowed out of their homes, let alone going traveling. Um, the second problem we've got is there's no product. Um, there is nothing to sell. Um, the hotels are closed at the moment. Uh, the attractions are closed at the moment. Uh, most of the means of communication and transportation, certainly the public means of uh, transportation are not functioning. So if you're in the tourism business, you're in a unique position of having, no having nothing to sell 
and no customers. It's a bit like running an ice cream parlor with no ice cream and nobody to buy it. You're not in business. And uh, so the situation places an existential threat to virtually every player in the European tourism industry. Now, Jose um, Ramon, oh, sorry, sure. I was just gonna to turn to Jose Ramon, he's in Mallorca, and that's obviously a very popular tourist destination as are a lot of places in Spain. So Spain is one of these Southern countries that's very concerned about this effect. What kind of effect could it have on the Spanish economy if people stop traveling this summer? Yes, first, uh, first of all, we have to, 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 to know what about some fever, just for you to know. Sp tourism in Spain represents more than 11% of to the total GDP, and there's a million, million people who is employed in that, in that issue. And with this COVID outbreak, we, are, we think that the sector of Spain could lose up until 90,000 million euros in this issue. That, and in fact, we have to, to know that one of the things that help us to Spain, as well as Portugal, Italy, or any other countries, uh, to get out of the crisis of the 2008 was specifically by, by the help of the tourism. But in this moment, tourism is one of the most affected sectors that we have then. That is very, very, very important that, uh, that we have to transmit to people, for example, in Spain, that Flying to Spain, being in Spain, is as safe as any other country in Europe. And it is very, very important for them to know that, uh, that uh, you have said before, some politicians has, uh, has speech in not uh, the best uh, sense in the, last, uh, in the last weeks. Ursula von der Leyen was one of them, sadly, but uh, fortunately, later she, she changed the, the point of view. But the last, this, this week as well, the, the commissioner from the German uh, government in tourism, he has uh, told the citizens of, from Germany, the German people, not to fly uh, to, to, to Spain. And this is very, very unfair, first of all, because Spain is as fair and is as safe at any other country, and this is uh, is just the opposite. This populism, this populistic narrative, doesn't have any sanitary criteria, and in fact, this is against uh, about what uh, European means. Euro Europe means because the the, the feeling, uh, the main important thing in, in in Europe was the the freedom for for the for move the movement of people for goods and, and the services and tourists. Is the movement implies the the movement of people and uh, and the services that is uh, goes directly against the European project. That uh, finally, Spain is as safe as any other country, and that's the the, the thing we are doing here. And uh, you have to know the figures: of the death people and infected people in, in Spain is decreasing, decreasing every every day. Well, as you say, I mean, tourism is a kind of international game by nature, especially in Europe, where people travel abroad so much. Um, and so we're really trying to search for, for European solutions. And both of you, the two MEPs, you're both on the European Parliament's Tourism Task Force. Istvan, tell me about what the Tourism Task Force and, and the European Parliament in general is really expecting in terms of how the EU can coordinate a return to somewhat of, of a tourism sector being allowed this summer? Uh, we are a European institution uh, which uh, has uh, lots of members, political members. It means uh, different political parties from different member states. That's why uh, together politicians, I think we have to create, we have to organize political lobby for the European tourism industry and for the about 20 million people who are working in the European tourism. So I think, of course, we have uh, some kind of co-decision mechanism with the European Council, if you would like to make a decision about the budget. Uh, and we have to, because we need more money to support the European tourism in the future. But uh, for example, we had to make decision, decisions about the uh, airport uh, slots, uh, and uh, every week we have new and new uh, important uh, discussions, but the most important to organize some kind of lobby uh, to, to, pre to, to make a pressure, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to take the, the governments uh, under pressure and also the commission. Uh, and I think uh, we have three uh, very important things to do now. First of all, 
this time we have to put the European tourism on the ventilator. It means the European tourism companies need money, support, money, not two years later, not seven, year la seven years later, no, right now, because they have to survive. And after that, we have to rebuild the tourism, we have to open the borders, we have to create uh, the, uh, this year, we have to create a new uh, tourism uh, uh, smart solutions. And finally, the third thing is we need a long time new strategy in Europe. How can we rebuild and how can we uh, keep the European tourism as the best destination all over the world? So you that's why we are working. You mentioned these smart solutions, and, and one of the ideas kicking around out there is if it's still necessary to keep borders closed this summer, then there's two possibilities there. One is that people take domestic vacations, uh, you know, go to places in their own country being called staycations. And the other possibility is opening up these so-called tourism corridors between specific countries. Tom, let me turn to you. I mean, it, it strikes me that neither of these solutions will help the countries that really depend on external visitors mostly uh, for their tourism, right? I think you're quite right. I think the, I, I mean, the, the, the big problem we have, frankly, with all these measures is that a partial lifting just simply doesn't work in tourism terms. Um, nearly every tourism business has high fixed costs. Uh, these fixed costs are offset by maximizing capacity and you cannot run on 50% capacity. The airlines have made it fairly clear they can't do so. And I think most other tourism businesses would fall into that category. So the idea of a partial lifting um, is to allow businesses to open up only to guarantee that they will fail. So this is um, not much of a solution. I think, it, sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna put it to Jose Ramon because Spain is a country that has a lot of international tourists. If the only solution that you were offered were to be uh, that Spain would have to set up travel corridors with specific countries, in your mind, should that be with the countries where a, with a very heavy load of tourists coming in, like say the UK and Germany, uh, or should that be coordinated by the countries that are at the same stage of uh, infection rates? Well, I agree with what uh, the proposed by Croatia about the tourism corridors. I think it's a good idea. But anyway, for me, it's more important that uh, it is, it's okay. But I, for me, it was important to build trust and security for people and citizens. And they don't have to be afraid of, of flying. And if, if we don't uh, ensure that, they, they will be... They, they won't be they will be prefer they will prefer to stay at home that flying and this is what we have to do uh, the opposite for example in the last uh, committee trunk committee mr Breton came to to spain or something and I, I, one of my uh, advocates to, to him was to 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 plan uh, a new strategy that in my opinion is like a europe brand that we have to propose that People, they don't think they have to think just in their in its country, in their countries, because for, for us, uh, Europe is more than 27, 26, 28 countries in the, in the last uh, in the la last year. We had the whole body. When we have we had to to to, to develop a tourism uh, policy that encourages travelers to to leave the borders of member states by giving trust and security. And for me, this brand Europe is a very, very important issue because we have to give confidence and security to travelers. And, and if we just stay at home thinking that we are in our own country, we'll, what we are doing is make Europe smaller. And we have to believe that being at home is being in Europe and is, as I said in the last, in the previous uh, question, is as safe to be in Germany, in Holland, in Poland and any other country as to be in Spain, in Italy, in Portugal, in Greece, because we have to open mind and we have never before uh, a special touristic strategic strategy in Europe and we have unfortunately with this situation but we have if we think in positive we have to to, to believe that we have the first step for to create a specific tourism uh, strategy for the whole Europe and not just for thinking in, in one country.
Well, you, you mentioned that people need to feel safe enough to fly uh, in Absolutely. order for tourism to pick up. And there's two big hot debates there as we're waiting for some kind of EU recommendations for people to get back onto planes. Uh, one element is what the airline should be required to do this. Should they be required to keep seats empty between people, have social distancing on planes? Should they be required to take everyone's temperature? And uh, the other thing is keeping them afloat. Of course, they're asking for bailouts and there's this debate over whether or not they should be made to refund passengers, which is the normal rule, or if they should be offered offering time limited vouchers, which uh, keeps the money with the airlines and then also maybe encourages people to fly this year when they might otherwise be hesitant. It's, it's fun. Let me put those two questions to you in terms of helping the airlines and helping people to feel safe again to fly. Uh, do you think that the EU should come out with strict uh, instructions on, say, social distancing in airplanes, or would that really inhibit the return? And also, what's your take on this vouchers issue? Oh, too many questions. Uh, first of <laughs> all, the UN World Tourism Organization uh, created a good campaign. And the main message is to stay at home, to travel tomorrow. And it's very important because uh, we need a good solution. But if we will start uh, earlier than uh, it's possible, it means we will have more problem later. So I think, which is the most important question, to have a coordinated uh, uh, solution. Uh, it isn't possible if uh, Mallorca uh, will open the borders and will create uh, some kind of uh, uh, good example how the beaches, how the hotels, the restaurants, uh, uh, will be safe uh, for us as, as tourists. But uh, if those people who will travel there uh, will don't have the same uh, situation at home, uh, then it means Europe will have a big trouble, a bigger trouble later. So the main message is we need coordinated uh, uh, seeker and uh, safe solution uh, here in the European Union. Uh, and that it is the answer, uh, again, when we are talking about uh, the passengers, uh, for example, uh, on uh, airplanes. Uh, we, we need the same coordinated solution uh, everywhere, because it's not good if, the, if one of the uh, companies will uh, We'll use uh, one way, one example, the other one uh, will try to do something else. It's not good this time. Uh, so uh, first, first answer is uh, yes, uh, I agree. And you have to know that the tourism and the transportation issues are together in the European Parliament. So when we are talking, talking about transportation, it's important for the tourism. Uh, and the transportation, um, the, the, the transportation committee, the trunk committee, uh, work a lot uh, with the commission to find the best solution. And the second thing about the culture, uh, yes, uh, maybe Jose Ramon also uh, supports it. Uh, uh, I support it uh, because uh, we need uh, these companies. Uh, <clears throat> if, if we will lose. Uh, our air companies, if we lose our coach companies, uh, then uh, who and how can we travel in the future? So we have to help them, we have to support them, not because of the companies, because of the workers, the jobs, and because of the big tourism business. And finally, a well, quick question for Tom. We've been talking mostly here about travel within Europe, but of course, a big part of the European tourism sector is travel from outside Europe, particularly destinations like the United States, like China. Uh, for the moment, the citizens of uh, those countries are not able to enter uh, the EU's Schengen area. Do you think there's any possibility that non-Europeans will be able to visit the EU this summer? I think this summer is going to be very tight. I, th I think um, everything is contingent, as everyone has pointed out, on, on, on the ability to fly on an aircraft. Uh, if they can solve that problem, and if Europe is open, uh, then there is big pent-up demand. I mean, my <laughs> members, particularly in the United States and even in China, 
uh, are saying that there is no shortage of inquiries coming through. There's no shortages of bookings for 2021. And when we did a survey of our members last week, um, we asked them what they thought the prospects for recovery in the American market was. And 75% said that we should expect nothing before 2021. But 25%, which is a significant minority, said that we should anticipate business coming back in the fourth quarter of the year. So really September, October, November. Uh, there is a possibility something like that will occur. But so a possibility are, for the autumn, but not for the summer. But the, 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 the politicians have got to start concentrating on the economy mm -hmm. rather than just the health of the nation as a whole. Uh, the health of the economy is going to be the issue coming up and it will overwhelm our current concerns. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We certainly will be looking uh, keenly at what comes out of both the European Parliament and especially the European Commission in terms of a tourism strategy. I want to uh, thank all of our guests uh, for joining us this afternoon. And thank you also to the viewers at home. We'll be with you again next week for another politics debate. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Visontlatashra.